you going? It's Kwai here. In this podcast, I interview uh, Marcus Chan. He is the founder of Venly Consulting and SalesNinja.com as well. In this podcast is a really great interview where I uncover the secrets to his success and how he became a really great salesperson. So I think you'll really enjoy. Thanks. Hey, how you doing, man? <laughs> good evening. What's going on? <laughs> hey, man, I'm good, man. I'm fantastic. Nice, I'm nice. Fantastic. Yeah. Thanks for waking up so early, man. It's seven o'clock uh, over there, right? It's about four o'clock. It's no big deal, right? Four you just gotta get up. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Sorry about that. I thought it was seven o'clock um over there. So I was, you know, you know, you're probably early risers. So you know, you just, you just gotta get it done, right? So it's it's a little shift, right? Yeah. You, you, I mean, when you're, you when you're, you're like a, a, an yeah. entrepreneur, you, just, you have to like you find a way to get it done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Find a way. That's right. So yeah. Love it. Love it. How you going? All right. I'm great, man. We're going to have some fun today. Yeah, cool, we're, cool. We're fun. Yeah. Well, uh, Marcus, I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much for, for coming. And, um, you know, it's a true honor to interview you. I've seen what you're doing online. And, uh, you know, I love it how you're out there and, you, you know, how to become master closers and become great mm-hmm. sales. So, yeah, appreciate your time today. Welcome to the show. Hey, I tell you what, man, it's my absolute pleasure. And I'm, I'm excited for this because uh, it's fun, man. I got, I got yeah. friends out there, so we'll have more fun. Yeah, you man. Know, and, once I, once I get the link, I'll send it out to them. They'll be, they'll be pumped to hear about this. Awesome. Awesome. Really excited. Cool. All right then. So, um, so before the whole sales, because everyone knows you as, you know, one of the master sales of the world, right? So before that, what were you doing before the sales, before you got into the sales? I'm just curious. Yeah. Great question. And, mm. um, and, uh, and the way I really read that is really, Hey, what did you do before like a professional sales career? Right. Yeah. I think a, a lot of people at one point maybe did retail or do whatever. Right. So, uh, as a little background before that, um, I actually worked for my parents in, in a rest- Chinese, a Chinese restaurant. Oh wow! For years, right? So okay. when they immigrated to America in the late seventies, um, they were very poor. They had absolutely nothing, no support. So they they started a Chinese restaurant. So growing up as a kid, that's all I did. I was in the back of the restaurant, working any any role possible, right? Okay. Uh, when I was about to go off into college. My plan was to go to school in the, in the university that was in the same town and just work for them to make money. But then they ended up selling that. They sold okay. the restaurant before. That. I'm like, crap, there's no income source now. So I go find okay. a job. So I picked up things like I was an assistant swim coach because I used to be a competitive swimmer um, to working in a retail store selling Speedos where we always sold swimsuits, Speedos and Speedo accessories. That's <laughs> okay, cool. <sold>. Interesting. <laughs> I did that while going to school mm. um and then um about you know about you know a couple of years like my junior year i got an internship um working for a company where it's actually, it's actually the largest rental car company in the whole world and uh, i was an intern for them for the summer it was a sales manager internship and that's when my kind of my first taste of just putting on a shirt and tie for work yeah um having a, people still came in the door but my job was to upsell them in the cars and sell them car insurance cool and that's kind of my first taste and then in 2007, um, I really wasn't sure what I was going to do, frankly. I, I really didn't know. And yeah. um, I was interviewing our, – our university had a bunch of, like, like uh, career fairs. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of businesses set up. I would talk to all of them. I interviewed all of them as many as I could. And I, was, I actually had a number of job offers at, at, at the end of the uh, – before, before I graduated. Mm-hmm. And there was a lowest-paying one, which is an outside business-to-business role paying about 30000 U.S. a year. Right. Okay. For a startup division for my existing company, brand new. They're like, hey, okay. <laughs> all right. Up to a role that paid about fifty thousand US, and that was like a more stable working on the analyst, you know, in a bank. Hmm. Well, it's funny because um, I turned out all the other jobs, you know, against my parents' wishes. <laughs> but yeah. the lowest one at thirty thousand yep. in outside sales and to build this this company up, and um, it was interesting because. They obviously were very against it, but I saw the opportunity. I saw the yeah. opportunity where, hey, what you know what? I learn. Yeah, I could, I could build something, right? Okay. I could build nice. something from scratch. Um, and I felt safe in the sense that at least it was a division of a larger company. So I'm like, well, there are a, there are pretty pretty good companies, so this should be it should be fine. So that was my first taste going right into it. Yeah. And, uh, and since then, I've never left <laughs> outside sales. So. Yeah. <laughs> I've nice. been in that world ever since. Yeah. Oh wow, that's incredible. So, um, so you made the shift. So you're working in in your um your parents' restaurant, and you're probably in your head all the time thinking about what you want to do as well. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like you're just looking around for like, sales positions, right? It must have been hard mm-hmm. to to break out of the 
um, you know, your parents' expectations to, you know, to have something stable like in accounting or finance and everything. Right. But you, you followed your, you followed your heart and, and you, you went after that outside sales. Yeah, that was re- that's, that's right. really cool. Awesome. It was a gamble. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So would you consider yourself like that type of person where you just take risks and, and just jump into it and then yeah. figure it out? Yeah. That's, that's your Great question. Not, not really at so much of the time, right? Because okay. it was um, a calculator risk. Interesting. Right? Because and what I mean by that was like, I knew, you know, being a college graduate, like graduate, you usually don't have like many bills, right? I yeah. mean, most of all student loans, um, I was fortunate. I, I worked my entire way. I got scholarships. I, I had zero, I had zero debt basically. So okay. I'm like, so really, yeah. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't, <laughs> have, I don't have much risk, right? Yeah. I don't want to have much. I'm like, worst case scenario, I can go get a different job. Right. Mm. And now one thing I didn't know was I knew the director who, 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 um, who was going to be my boss again. Right. Mm. Cause I used to work for him before. Okay. So I knew I could bank on that. And I had heard of the whole, of the old adage where they said, don't, you know, uh, don't chase the job, chase, you know, follow your, follow your boss, you know, don't follow whatever job title. So mm, that's cool. I went to go work for him and, uh, and it just happened to be outside sales. But I, re- what I really saw was, Hey, this is an opportunity where I could probably climb the ranks, mm-hmm. you know, and really build a name for myself. So it wasn't even necessarily, I was focused on outside sales. Mm. I actually never saw myself as a salesperson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I just never saw it that way. Right. Like in any role I've had where when I was selling speedos, I sold double everyone else sold, right? I, I when I sold insurance, I was number one out of forty plus people. I never saw myself as a good salesperson. Mm, I merely mm. saw as something I, I believe in what I'm offering, okay. and these people have to have it. Okay, interesting about the mindset. So it just ha- obviously that worked very well in sales. Mm, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. that transitioned really, really well and go into that role. And then I, I thought, really I just I'll just be like maybe managing people and building mm. a business. That's really mm. what I thought. Was, that's why I felt comfortable. Mm, but interesting. By going into outside sales, and I struggled so much up front. I was terrible. Yeah, yeah. A lot, lot, lot of time to figure it out. By figuring it out, and then it's it's like eventually over time. It's kind of like growing up as a kid. I hate eat, I hate eating vegetables. Mm-hmm. Now I love eating vegetables because I, I ate them all the time as a kid. Right. Yeah, so yeah. because I was forced forced myself to do something that was really uncomfortable, I learned to love the process, and but and as a result of it it created a career where I'm like, as time went on, I'm like, wow. I mean, I just freaking love the game. Like I mm-hmm. love the game over time. It took me to get together that point early yeah. on. I was kind of like, ah, I think this is a good path. I think I'll become, you know, like when you're 21, 22, you don't know what you're doing. You yeah. Have no idea, right? <laughs> yeah. You have no idea. It's like, <laughs> no well, idea. I can always change it. So yeah, yeah, true. True. Okay. I'm, I'm curious about um, your story on, okay. So you started off, I mean, outside sales and you probably, yeah, you didn't know what you're doing. You were just experimenting. You had no idea. Right. And you're probably, you know, you don't know how to sell and you're not making any deals and stuff like that yet. But, right. but how did you get better? What, what was, what was your process in getting better? Did you read books? Yeah. Did you get coaching or did you just trial and error? What was it? What was the deal there? Yeah. Great question. It was kind of, it was kind of a combination, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think like many organizations and I didn't realize at the time, but it's, it's quite common. Um, yeah. First day on the job, there actually was no training, right? There's no training. So there was no training in a job. Okay. No. Yeah. Now they did, they did have a manual though. Written by <laughs> a <people> manual. <laughs> okay. Who had never sold before. Right. You know, it's like, it's a man like this thick. It's a it's mo- motivational the, speech. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah I'm like, great. You know, like, this is like, this is my work like 1971. Perfect. Right. So. Okay. Yeah. You know, nice. It didn't work. Um, my boss never actually done the job either. Right. My direct okay. boss. Right. So, cause I had a different manager at that point. So, so no one could train you. Okay. So I'm like, okay. So <clears throat> I remember literally, this is when I, this is when I realized it though. Right. It was day two. Day one, I went to my boss. I said, hey, listen, um, what should I do today? He said, he's like, I want you to go outside and I want you to walk into like 30 businesses and get business cards. I said, okay. Okay. They're, they didn't give me a script. Didn't give me nothing. I'm like, okay, I'm going to go out there. I did 60 that day. Walked into 60 businesses that day. Just what? Just just companies walked just in. walked straight in, walked straight saw in. the receptionist and just yeah, told her who you are. Try, try to like present... <laughs> oh, wow. Try to like book it on punch. I tried to do something. <clears throat> I had I, I, that, day, that day was over. Really nervous as well, sweating. <laughs> oh, super nervous. Yeah. Booked zero appointments, closed zero deals, no warm leads. I'm like, yeah. Oh my god! Like I made a terrible a mistake. Of character, yeah, yeah. I yeah. should have been an accountant, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Next step, I'm gonna go again. The exact okay. same thing. Very similar results. So I'm like, all right. 
I just did a little 120, like I only walked in 120 businesses in two days. And mm. I did, this is sales camp and not be this hard. It, it can't, it can't be. So um, I went to the library that weekend, right? The public library. Mm -hmm. And I got any, every single sales book I could find. This is like Brian Tracy, Brian Tracy. Zig Ziglar, Augman, Dino, all the classics that, you know, mm. that people would read, you know, and, um, and this is like 2007. So, you know, I mean, people were definitely on the internet, but there wasn't like as many blogs, you know, no. LinkedIn was still very much a, a recruiting platform at the time. There mm. wasn't much of a sales resource out there, right? So it was like taking these tactics um, and trying, just try, it's trial and error, going yeah. out there, trying the, trying the phone scripts, trying the walk-in scripts, trying all these things. Um, because a lot of times, or because of the time, like all those books that are really well known, mm. right? They were by people who had, hadn't sold for years, mm. people who had been out of the field for years. Like social selling was starting to become a new thing. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, so I didn't know what social selling was, trying to figure that out. So um, it was a transition of trial and error, combining it, tweaking it, and learning little things, right? Like in, okay. For example, the way I would do it like every day, after, after each appointment, I would, I would write down one thing I did really well mm, and one cool. thing I, I, I could tweak. Mm, right the sales and journal I, nice yeah so yeah. i was just self auditing myself mm. until i started seeing better results now it took a little time so like month one i was the worst month two i was the worst month three i was number one and then i held that ever since then so um but it took a time to, to get to that point it wasn't it wasn't as easy right and then eventually when i had to start training people mm. i realized that i needed a methodical way to teach people stuff and that's mm. really what it just started, it starts shaping like because of the, each situation that occurred, I'm like, how do I, how I, how do I solve this? How yeah. do I close more? How do I increase my closing ratio? How do I prospect more? How do I uh, build a funnel that's consistent? Mm. How do I influence someone who's this type of decision maker? Right. Mm -hmm. and, that, and, and training myself was really critical. So mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, so you get, yeah, you build a lot of character, you build a lot of courage by approaching those, those companies and, um, uh, receptionist and everything trying to get through to the gatekeeper. Um, oh, yeah. okay. And, uh, you mentioned about building your pipeline as well. So I'm curious about, um, like how, how do you, how do you go about building your pipeline? You mentioned, I think it was like through social selling, right? Do you use like tools these days such as LinkedIn and uh, like yeah. what's the deal there? What do you do when you're building your pipeline? So yeah, so today is a little different than back then now because now there's <laughs> yeah 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 there's quite a lot. It's just such a different world, right? Yeah, even yeah. Since then, right? So like, mm. um, in terms of social selling, yeah. So I'm really big. I think the first piece is, at least for me personally, it's knowing where your audience is at. So majority okay. of my target audience um, is actually on LinkedIn, right? Okay. So I spend most of my time. It's, it's really I'm selling to sales professionals. I'm selling mm. to uh, business leaders. I'm selling to like sales leaders. Yep. So uh, most of them are on LinkedIn. That's usually what most of them are. So mm. I'm, on, I'm on there and there's like, I, I utilize it. Um, uh, I, I don't, I don't usually post things that are like, Hey, look, look, come, like, come talk to me about yeah. my sales training program or cause that doesn't usually work. Right. People think yeah. it's very spammy. So um, I'm much more strategic about that. Um, mm -hmm. So once, uh, once I left, I mean, I, I've used, I've used social selling for years now in just different ways, right? Yep. Whether before I was um, using to recruit, uh, you know, talent for my mm. sales team. Cause I had a large sales team of 110 people over. A yeah. So, um, whether I was doing that to, uh, before that, um, you know, it was, I was doing research off LinkedIn, right. To be able to get, yeah. get, get in back door. And so now, um, the way I use it now, cause you still do it for research, but mm -hmm. I will use it to generate leads into my funnel. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a little different now. Cause I, I have a digital marketing funnel. Mm -hmm. And I can I have a nurture sequence, right? But mm. on like on LinkedIn, um, what I'll do a couple different ways. So number one, uh, I, I do, I post quite a bit of content, not a ton. Like I post like once a day on LinkedIn, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's always sales tip, sales lessons, um, uh, a story with the moral a sales lesson, life lesson at the very end. Right. Mm. So, um, organically it just, what happens is it, it's building up a following. Right. Mm. And, um, you know, I have uh, a link in there as well in my comments where people can go yep. and subscribe to my free trainings. Mm. So they go on my free trainings, they can watch my free trainings, whatever it's going to be. Um, nice. now that organically will generate leads as a result. So that mm. this way they may, maybe they see me, they go, okay, whatever they go to my profile, 
look, okay, this, this guy's so pretty interesting. Look at his profile. My mm. profile's been optimized to attract my target audience. Mm -hmm. So if you're my target audience on LinkedIn, you take a look at my profile, you say, you know what? Like, okay, this guy's achieved some pretty cool things. Wow. Yeah. Mm. Let me look at his uh, bow. Okay, it's pretty neat. Okay. Let mm. me look now at his um, his, his track record. Well, okay, it's pretty good. Well, yep. maybe he is a you know a BS artist. Let's, let me just, let's find out. Oh, look at mm. like, he's got 52, 54 recommendations from other people talking about how, how he's done a really good and changed their lives. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now he's starting to look a little, little more legit. Look at my yep. posts. They see that I've been posting consistently, articles, et cetera. So mm. that organically will get them into my funnel at one point. Yep. You know, and then they will probably eventually um, add me on LinkedIn. Yeah. Right? So, that, look, so I usually get, not a ton, but I usually get like 20, 30 requests per day. And mm. um, it, when I accept the ones that are my target market, mm -hmm. I'll immediately send them a video message. Mm. Okay. Right? So I drop them a video message. Right. Say, Hey, thank you so much for adding me. I really, really appreciate it. I want to bring you nice. some massive value. Can I see you're in sales? You know, Hey, check out this free train below. Hope we give you some great value. If, if it's something that you're interested, interested in. Thanks. Mm. Oh, no, cool. no sale. Yep. I include a link below for free training, send over to them. Once they opt in they're they're into my funnel. Mm. Right? So, um, and then I have a sequence that warms them up. It gives them massive value. Tons of, free, I mean, the train, like even if they, if they buy zero from me. Yeah. Now they will they get so much value from there, and then then after after the seven day nurture sequence, then they go into um um a uh, I, I nurture them every week with a weekly newsletter. Yeah, that's where they they get content every single week. Mm. So you know because the timing is half the battle. Once once they're ready to go, mm. they're gonna be they're gonna be ready to buy, right? So mm. I might I might I might make multiple soft offers throughout. Yep, until they until close. Mm, that's awesome, man. Like, so you built a, um, a marketing system first, yes. uh, a nurturing system where you, you attract the, the target audience uh, through right. your sources, different sources like LinkedIn, and then you've set up your, your nurturing uh, email sequences. Is that right? Like a yes. online, yep, where you provide them great content and, you know, it, whether they say yes or no, it doesn't matter. Like, you know, you've already helped them 100%. and you might get a few people. Oh, that's cool, man. Um, yeah. yeah, and I can definitely attest to that because I think I did a search on, I, I typed in sales in Instagram and I think your name yep. popped up. And then I think, yeah, I think I saw a picture of you. Um, you were like training someone in sales. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I looked you up on the website. Okay, cool. This guy looks pretty good. And then I found, then I did some more research and I saw a YouTube video. You're being interviewed on a podcast. I was listening to yep. that. And yep. uh, yeah, it, it's, you know, it's a real deal and everything like that. So um, appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. It takes, time, really it takes well. time to build up, right? I mean, yeah, especially yeah. the marketing pieces, you know, it's like, it takes time to get to that point of uh, actually building up, right? Mm. So it's just um, like anything else. It's, you know, it's, if you ever watch the old school movie, um, Glenn, Glenn Gary, Glenn yeah. Ross, right? You know, AIDA, -A right? Attention, yeah. decision, action, right? And being a new entrepreneur, which I've been doing this for about six months now, it, what I've done in the past is irrelevant, right? So now I need to build new brand. So it's mm. all about the, the, it's really about the awareness, right? Yeah, yeah. And the awareness is the number one issue that a new business owners run into. Most mm. people don't realize that, but if you, if you can, neutralize that mm. and you can solve every problem sales solves every every problem you have in business mm. every single oh, problem yeah yeah 100% yeah. agree, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100 agree. like the um the world does not revolve i mean the world cannot move around without people like us like sales that's people right, right? nothing right. happens without like getting something signed on the dotted line that's right that's and, exactly um, right everyone's waiting for us to to sign it you know sign the documents and then project you know, managers can, can kick in the project, everything goes in motion, but nothing happens without exactly us. Exactly so, right. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, yeah. And you briefly just touched on this before, before um, getting attention, because um, I think you used to work in corporate for quite some time, a few years, and you yes. learned a lot of things, right? And yeah. then now, now you've got the challenge of getting attention because you're trying to get more exposure and stuff. But mm -hmm. um, it's back into the corporate when you're in corporate and everything. So what was the, some of the biggest lessons that you learned when you're working in corporate? Yeah, so I was in corporate America for 14 plus years. 14 years, so, nice. Yeah, yeah, 14 years, right? And I mean, there are um, so many um, incredible lessons I learned, right? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I think some of the key lessons I learned, number one, um, having a process that's scalable is really critical. Mm. That's really, uh, that's something I, I learned. A product that is scalable, right? Yeah, oh, yep. a, 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 product, a product that is scalable, for sure, mm. but a process a that's process. scalable, Okay. right? So for example, like if I was to say just, uh, if I, if I, in 2007, when I went to outside sales mm -hmm. and I just did that for a year and started my own business, mm -hmm. 
in my mind, I'm like, okay, I, I need to really manually grind out and just try to find as many people to talk to as possible. And that's kind of what sales people just kind of do, right? They're like, okay, I'm gonna go networking events, I'm gonna call people, I'm gonna show up, and I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna like be everywhere like that. Well, you have to manually be there every time, yeah. right? Versus, you can, if you can build a marketing system, like what I've done, mm. it takes a lot of work up front, you still need to do a lot of work with it, but it, it, it pays you back 100, 100X over time, mm. right? Because now you're finding me on, on YouTube, you're finding me in different areas because of all stuff I'm doing up front from a marketing perspective, mm, right? Mm. Not easy, long game, no yeah. immediate gain by doing it, right? Um, so I learned these, I needed to create scalable processes and systems that allows me to grow the business exponentially by doing the work up front, right? And that goes from um, a marketing system to anything from, you know, it could be like, how do I hire someone, right? What's the common protocol and systems that I follow to find the best talent, right? Mm. How do I train and develop as a system, right? So the way I've always thought about it, it was, um, when I, like, for example, when I first became a sales manager, um, if I could build a factory, a sales training factory, whoever went into the factory, when they came out, they were a superstar. Mm. How do I build that? So it's building something that will create something great, no matter who it went inside. Mm. And that means you have a system of skill. So that meant, you know, when I took my team, when I, was, when I first, um, you know, was a sales manager, mm -hmm. took my team and I only had four or five reps or six reps at the time. Yep. I grew it to 20 reps, right? And we exploded in growth and sales, right? Mm. But you cannot, you cannot, you, you cannot, you know, multiply your team by six, seven X, um, and assume that that's the type of results you're going to get mm. unless you have a scalable system of training, hiring, managing people. Right? Yeah, yeah, true. And then, and then when I uh, got promoted to a larger role where I had 110, uh, 110 employees and I had 11 sales leaders reporting into me to repeat that in remote areas where I couldn't physically see them required a scalable process. Mm. So having that scale bill is really, really critical. That's, that was a major thing. Uh, I learned in corporate America, right? Mm. Uh, number two, uh, that anticipation is truly power, right? To be able to anticipate exactly what's probably going to happen allows you to work backwards to mm. get to that result you want to go to, right? So if I anticipate like, hey, this is what's going to happen. Like, I've seen this happen before. Yep. Like, we're going to lull this time of year for sales. What could I do one, three, two, three months prior that would drive sales? Mm, right. So okay. for example, in the business I used to be in, historically, the third quarter would always be a lull because we were on a um, June to May uh, fiscal calendar. Mm -hmm. So uh, the third quarter was December, January, February. So the holiday weeks, you in, automatically, you were already out about three out of 13 weeks mm -hmm. uh, of productivity. People yeah. just find ways to get distracted. Plus that vacation. So really, you're out basically you think about 25%, 20% uh, or 30% of your quarter is gone. Yeah. So you need to find a way to make it up. So I would do all the things up front, you know, that would drive the right activities and behaviors that will lead to a great December, January, February, right? Mm. But that required being proactive and understanding trends, right? Yep. So the challenge I run into now being a new business owner, I'm like, okay, this is my first year doing this. Mm -hmm. There's things I'm going to miss, but yeah. I notate it. So every time, like uh, every single Friday right now, this is something I learned early on. Um, every single Friday, I have a decision journal. I write down what were the major decisions I made for the business and why did I make it. Okay. A it decision could be wrong journal. Still. Okay. Oh, yeah. Just to allow me to really think about it mm -hmm. and go from there. Like, you know what? That didn't work this week. You know what? That thing that I decided a month ago, which mm -hmm. I thought would be a huge, awesome thing, it, was, it didn't work. For example, I put, I put together a webinar that I thought would be wildly popular, uh, you know, and do really, really well. It was basically how to use LinkedIn to sell. Okay. Did awesome. Great, great. A lot of people signed up for it. Really good attendance. Great results from it, right? In terms of people being engaged, mm -hmm. but from conversions from that into, uh, you know, into my digital program was not the, not the level I expected. It was low, I thought. I'm yeah. like, this is not right. Like, but then I, I thought more about, like, you know what? Like, it wasn't enough of a correlation, mm -hmm. right? So I taught something that was almost too specific mm -hmm. and my offer at the end did not align very well with it. So the messaging was off. And this is, this is where I dissected it after, right? Mm. Did so you like, advertise on face, Facebook? 
it was Facebook so, advertising, yeah. Uh, so so, so Facebook, I don't know, I'm still working on that. I'm still learning how to effectively do that, right? Mm. To me, it's like, um, I, I've done decent reach, but I'm not getting the conversions I'd like, right? Mm. So I'm still tweaking, like, hey, how's my copy on there? Mm. How's, how's, how's like uh, the image? I've been adjusting videos on there. Yeah. Uh, so I've been testing a little bit. Okay. Um, I haven't seen anything that's been like a, a bang. I'm like, wow, this has been a crazy conversion. This cost me a dollar twelve a lead. I haven't seen anything like that yet. So I'm still tweaking it. Yeah. To get the level I want. Right. Okay. Cool. So cool. it's just it's a di- different game for me. It's, it's something new for me. I never mm. used that before until I became an entrepreneur. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. Um, so you did about 14 years in corporate. You learned a lot of um, things in terms of direct sales and learned about. Um, the seasons as well, where, where you predict what's oh, yeah. going to happen in future and you prepare for yep. that. So that's really good. Okay. So then you, you did the transition from corporate to, to new business owner. What yep. did you do? Did you um, prepare like a buffer of, of finances that will cover you for next 12 to you know 24 months or what was it? Or, or you just yeah. built these systems while you're working in the corporate and then when you're ready to go or did you get some clients and then you, what was the transition? How did you transition? Yeah, great question. So, um, so this is a long answer to your question, but what happened was um, in about 2015, um, I knew eventually I wanted to do my own thing. I didn't know what though. Okay. Okay. And at that time, I had a lot of people say, hey, listen, why are you been, what, what, when was this? 2015 or? 2015. 15. Okay. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so, so you felt it. Okay, cool. Yeah. I got oh, a little time cool. ago. So, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I was like, what am I going to do? Right. Um, and at the time I was a, I was a sales manager still in, but uh, I built this, I built this really successful team, and uh, it was really large. And we we're going to split in half. And uh, I was about to get promoted to a, a larger regional director role. And one of those common questions I would I would get a lot of, a lot of questions about things. People, people ask me mm-hmm. about like, personal development. Hey, what's your what's your routine? How are you doing this? How are you always fired up? How are you like always winning? How are you always doing these things? Um, and then people are like you should write a book. You should write a book. So I'm like, okay. I'm like, what should I write about? They're like, well. Yeah. Right about how um, you got promoted 10 times in 10 years. Like, okay, sure. That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So I wrote, I wrote, I wrote an ebook um, about how I got promoted 10 times in 10 years. Mm. And uh, I started learning how to do internet marketing at that point and basically build a back end system where I can automate it. Mm. And that was kind of neat where it's like, oh, okay, that's kind of cool. Like, all right, like, wake up, you have a $9 payment. It's not, it's not a lot, but still kind of, it's kind of a neat idea. But like, oh, Waking up having checks in your inbox, right? Mm. In your bank account is very interesting. It opens like, up to possibilities, right? So Yes. Yeah. It was proof of concept, right? I'm like, yeah. oh, I can do this, right? Interesting, yeah. Now, um, but also because when, when you're a high performer in corporate America, I mean, I was doing very well. I was making multiple six figures. Life was going really good. And I haven't got to my director level role yet. I'm like, okay, I'm only going to make more money after this. Um, <laughs> yeah. How am I going to leave what's a really, a really good life, right? Like built, I, I created a life where most people are like, damn, I wish I had that, right? Like, so I'm like, mm. how can I leave that, right? Like leaving the good for potentially, potentially great or I could fail, right? So I need a better way. So what could I offer? And I started really digging in, so I started soul searching. I started realizing the most common thing that people were asking about were sales questions, right? And I also realized, could I would hire on average about 20, 30 people a year, okay? And what I uncovered out of the 20, 30 people I would hire each year, and now that, that meant I would interview about 100. Mm. The 20 to 30 I'd hire, most of them were the best of their prior, best of the best from where they came from with very minimal training. So I started saying it's a huge opportunity. I'm like, I'm like because I'm giving them more skills, now they're phenomenal. Mm. I'm teaching in a scalable process, right? I'm like, huh. And then the other 60, 70 people I didn't hire definitely didn't have any training. Yeah. And then before that, when I was a sales manager, I would interview six to eight people per week. I mean, literally, I'll interview like hundreds of people a year. I'm like, mm. I meant there's a major gap right there for B2B, real B2B proven sales training, right? Because I also uncovered two when I was reading all those books. Like, we're both book, good book guys, but yeah, what yeah. I uncovered most of them, those authors, had never truly sold in the field. Mm, Most yeah. of them never carried the bag. Most of them never had proven techniques, but they became successful as a result of selling Teaching. the books, becoming a speaker, right? Mm, so, mm. so I'm like, okay. So I actually went, I, I, I figured out how to build a digital course. I built a digital course. Uh, I was still working full time. I was traveling. Um, I was in a hotel room hundred plus nights a year. Um, I was on planes all the time. And, mm. uh, 
eight plus hours a week at a newborn baby. Mm-hmm. So between like nap schedule and uh, traveling and late nights at the hotel and on weekend late hours, I started building this comprehensive A to Z training. A training if in 2007 if I had, that could have taken my game to the next level. Mm-hmm. That's something I would teach you step by step. Everything you need to know from start to finish to be a true BB sales professional, but not just that, be one that could generate multiple six figures, that could build a seven figure business, one that can mm. create something from nothing, right? Mm. So I built that. It took me a lot, took over a year to, 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 to do that. Uh, it took I loved year. it. Okay. It took mm. me a year, over a year, realistically, because it's yeah. like, you know, filming, recording, editing, figuring out how to do some of these skills I didn't have, right? Like, mm. so. Um, <laughs> brand new to me so i uh, did a soft launch back in march last year about a year ago okay I sold some copies okay. right and uh the, my first price you know is is i've actually kept this adjust the price a little bit mm. and the price at the time was 9.97 right so i'm like okay. oh crap like sold a couple copies they just made two thousand dollars overnight mm. now i'm wow. like I okay. can scale this. I can scale this. <laughs> yeah, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> okay. I'm like, this is no nine dollar ebook, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like if I can sell this, I can sell high ticket programs, right? Yeah. I can yeah. build mastermind groups, I can do whatever, right? I'll so sell like, Lamborghinis, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. I'm like, I'm like, okay. I'm like, this is this is the opportunity here, right? So yeah. um so then I started planning out when I was gonna leave and how I was gonna leave, right? So okay, yeah. um, I mean there's some things I had to time out, so I had a bunch of stock options that were going to invest in july so i want to wait to get my stock options okay uh, i also had we have what's called presence club which is like the it's for the elite um trip yep. it's a free trip it's it's like a vacation you yeah, know yeah. like the resort like yeah, that was in yeah. august <laughs> i wanted that all right and then i also we also i also knew we had an earnings call uh, oh, which one call an earnings call so uh it, oh, it's publicly, yeah. Comp- yeah, yeah publicly traded company so i knew the earnings call was gonna happen on september like Mid September, and I, I, I want to capitalize on that for my options to that are vested. Okay, so, okay. So once the earnings call is done, stock went up. Yeah, I cashed yeah. out my stock, yeah. turned in my resignation. Yeah. September 18th, my last day. So <laughs> you walked out, <laughs> okay. yeah. So, okay. um, and so I had that, but also like financially, like uh, you know, we're well, you know, like we're like I'm pretty, I'm pretty frugal, so I'm, yeah, pretty, I'm, pretty, yeah. I'm pretty smart with my money. Okay. very strategic with it right so um i've always planned ahead so that was never a thing when you grow up poor right you're kind of like if it's a rainy day something happens you gotta yeah. be ready for that next move so mm. um it took me a while to get to that point but you know financial set i mapped out what i was going to do in my business right um like from a coaching consulting perspective um what programs i'm going to offer etc mm. so when i left the, the website's already launched yeah say, yeah right so awesome it it was boom 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 it all planned out nice so nice it was, uh, step by step and so you positioned that, yourself from america yeah 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 you positioned 100%. yourself very well or well, you had um your products already set up you got the websites all set up and everything that's you that's sold it. out so you got your cash and everything and you just pretty much just yeah uh, not really hit the phones but you started just like talking to people online and just trying to 100%. okay oh nice exactly right you awesome awesome that's awesome Cool. All right then. Um, so we did advertising as well. Um, okay. So uh, you explained about starting your first business, which is really good. The transition, excellent as well. Um, okay. How about um, let's back our way a bit from um, from sales. How about your what's your daily routine like um, in terms of productivity, health, energy, and everything? I'm curious. What it is? What is it? And yeah. also your mindset. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I learned over time, right? You really need to have a solid routine. I'm a big routine guy. So, um, yep, cool. Like, so, so routine, for example, yep. like, yeah, a big, so my typical, so today's a little, little different day because we have, woke up a little bit early, but usually I wake up about five o'clock. So, not that much early, but I wake up five yep. o'clock. Um, immediately after that, I roll out of bed, I go change, uh, brush my teeth, and I go do a power 30 minute workout. So, it's okay. usually it's about 5.15 to about 5.45. Mm-hmm. I do a power workout at home. It's uh, 360 to 480 repetitions of a specific muscle group. Very targeted, eight to 10 minutes of abs, right? I hit it hard, very hard. And then once I'm in the whole time where I'm working out, I'm only listening to things that'll make me better. That could be, you know, great podcasts like this. Mm. It could be an audio book. Someone's going to teach me something. Okay. Mm. Mm. After that, shower, change, uh, 
go downstairs to my home office, right? And then I go and, uh, and I actually will write out my one, three, and five-year goals. Nice. Okay. So I write all my goals out, right? I do all that. And then I spend a little bit of time and I actually I visualize, right? So I have something that's called a, a vivid vision. Mm -hmm. But I have a pretty comprehensive thing where I've, I've written it all out. I've written out my personal values, my, what I want to be known for, who I need to become. Mm. And one year from now, if someone was to film me with a camera, they're filming me with a camera, how, what my schedule would look like one year from now, assuming I achieve every single one of my one year goals. Mm, okay. It's all written out. It's mm. like wake up at five o'clock, so do this. Do, I you feel designed amazing. your perfect day, like your, your, your perfect average day in right, one year's time. Okay. Average day, assuming I've achieved every single one of my goals, mm. right? So it's, it's, it's like, it's a little, if, if someone's to like film me and then, and then write it all out, well, it's not just what I did, but how do I feel? Right. It's like, I feel, mm, it feels that's awesome interesting, to yeah. be able to do this. Right. So, um, and then I've taken all of that content that I've written out and I've recorded myself going through it. And there's some meditation exercises too, as part of it that I, I walk myself through record mm, that. Mm. So I literally like once I get to write, write my goals out, I sit down, close my eyes, and I hit play on my phone. Yeah, okay. And I visualize and I go through and essentially I'm meditating and visualizing at the same time all those things. Yeah. Right? It takes about 10 minutes for that part of the process. So what's happening that sets me up for to be to be to be to get going, right? Um, and then after that, I'll do go through affirmations, like five minutes, some affirmations, okay. And then uh, from there, I'll usually will uh, start work, right? So mm. I'll start work. So, and then uh, I'll start work and, you know, my day is a mixture of different things. So um, the cool part now is I have way more flexibility. Yeah. Because I'm not traveling. Mm. So I'll probably work for like an hour or so. My kid will wake up. I get him ready for school. How we have his breakfast. He's three. He has breakfast. I get him ready for school. I drop him off, you know, and then yeah. I'll come back. And then, um, you know, I might have. Yeah, you know, I, I usually do like two, three podcast interviews a week now mm. consistently um, It's because it's for awareness. So nice. uh, I go maybe do a couple of podcast interviews, maybe some client calls, um, probably some, some content creation, mm. right? Um, some LinkedIn prospecting, engaging with my audience, going in there, um, generating leads, um, depending mm. on what data, it might be a live webinar. Yep. Right. So uh, usually it's pretty robust. It's usually very well planned out. Um, mm. Quite a bit of stuff that needs to be done. Because yep. uh, just like anything else, it's very easy to get distracted as an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Like, you see, you see, like Grant Cardone do something. Oh crap! I should, I should be doing that too, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Let me slow down. Let me focus on my game. Yeah. He's playing at a different level. We'll get there. We'll get there. Slow down. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get there. So, Damn it! I'll get that private jet soon. All right, just wait. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get that eventually. So, um, yeah, but that's uh, that's my typical like routine though from from that piece, right? Really okay. Uh, let, 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 actually, let me keep going. So. Hmm. After the day is pretty much over, at the end of the day, because there's also a PM routine too. Okay, um, good. At the end of the day, uh, after my kid goes to sleep, unfortunately he goes to sleep kind of late, but uh, when he, after he goes to sleep, um, I'll sit and that's when I'll do my, my gratitude list. So I'll do my nice. gratitude list at the end of the day. You know, just three to five things I'm really grateful for, right? Mm -hmm. Write them all out. Um, really, really important. Write them all out. Uh, I'll review my goals again, right? Uh, my one, three, five. I won't write I'll almost read them. Okay. Right? I'll meditate for like five minutes mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll read for a little bit too. Okay. I'll read for like 10 minutes. Something's going to feed my brain. Um, and then from there, then I sleep. Mm, nice. Awesome. Um, I love it how you're so clear with your goals. Like you, you, yeah. you, you went to the level of how you feel um, as well. I don't know many people who, who have a goal, but they want to have a goal of how they feel when they've achieved it as well. You know, you tend to skip that type of thing, right? So I'm curious, like, do you drink, uh, you know, what, what's, um, do you drink coffee or do you smoke or do you, you know, uh, do you drink alcohol or anything like that? Or like, yeah, great yeah. question. So, um, yeah. uh, I drink coffee, right? Okay. So I have like two cups two of coffee, coffee a day. Coffee. Right? Okay, I've yeah. had zero so far, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 that's no, nah, that's crazy, man. <laughs> really? This is just, this is how, this is how I am. Like, so, um, yeah. like what happens is when I woke up in preparation for our interview, mm -hmm. right. I put myself in a peak, peak state. That's all yeah, I did. Like, 
So, <laughs> so that was you know? uh, that was your workout that you explained before about the muscle groups and stuff, right? Yeah, I didn't do that this morning yet because I don't work up that early. You know? Yeah, I'm yeah. Too, right. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, but there's other things too, right? I mean, there's things you can like you, when you start realizing your body is simply a tool that you can manipulate in the way you want, right? Mm. It doesn't mean you're perfect every time, but then you can put yourself in the right state, mm. right? It's kind of like, if you're really angry, you try smiling, it shifts how you think, right? Like, it's mm. just what happens. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like, hey, if you're sad, you watch a funny movie, it changes how you feel. Like, you know, we're human beings are very easily influenced, mm. but you can also influence yourself in a different way. Right? So, so how, how did you put yourself in that peak state in the morning? What, what's your Today routine? Today was really... So first my alarm goes off. I'm like, man, I'm tired. Like 3.30, yeah. that's pretty early. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't I'm want to tired, do this podcast right? or interview door about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm like, I'm like but, but the thing is like when you have, um, uh, when you are massively clear of your purpose in life, mm. you know, things shift for you, right? So um, clarity is massive power. I learned that early on. When you yep. lack clarity to your goals, it's hard. So I, I woke up. I'm like, okay, you know what? Like I'm tired. I really rolled out of my bed. That was the first. I had to move. Once you start moving, it's, it's different, right? I moved. I brushed my teeth. I was still tired. I knew that was going to happen, right? Mm. So I had to go right into my my, my typical routines that I normally do okay. to trigger my state, right? So I, I forgot there's small things. So for example, like I, I went downstairs, um, I drink ice water, okay. apple cider vinegar, right? Okay. I immediately have my vitamins, right? So I take like, um, uh, I take um, a ginkgo balboa. So ginkgo, bal ginkgo balboa pills, right? Okay. It's for mental clarity and memory retention. Mm -hmm. So that's a natural herb. Uh, so take that. I take some vitamin C, some fish oil, nothing crazy. That's really it. So, yep. um, and then uh, from there, like, you know, I still wasn't, I was still feeling tired. So, okay. I did a bunch of jumping jacks, mm. right? Just to get the blood flowing. Once the blood was flowing, okay. All right. And then I went and I just, started, I, I was already like mentally just feeling like, like all right, here we go. Mm. It's coming. You, 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 can, you can feel it's like a train far away, but you can feel a rumbling, okay. right? Like, oh yeah, here it goes, here it goes. We're about to get going now, right? And then, um, and then from there, I'm good. And I knew once I got in the interview, it's on. Yeah, yeah. Right, because um, the other piece too is um, over time working in corporate America, you get trained if you do it right, how to put yourself in a peak state no matter how you feel. How to always bring your A game, right? So like, mm, yeah, when you're like, on, when you're on a call and all that on type a of call, stuff. right? Yeah. Like you know, like when you lead people, like you know, like they can't see you. It's all all audio, right? Yeah. No matter how I felt, I had to deliver, right? So yeah. it could be like, you know, it might be a situation where let's just say, maybe I wake up for like three o'clock, <clears throat> three o'clock for a flight, fly somewhere. I'm I'm, I'm it's a seventeen hour day, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm up in my hotel room that night. It's it's eight thirty p.m. I'm exhausted. Yeah. I might have a client call or whatever it is. Yeah. 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 Or maybe, you know, a clients are, are great. Maybe a, a top sales rep want to quit me. <clears throat> Funny to retain them, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you can't lose sound, right? So I need to be on my A game and be sharper and focus on my game to be able to be influential to influence them to stay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do that feeling mentally weak. So I had to myself in that peak performance, right? So, nice. um, but go back to your question. So, um, Couple cups of coffee. Um, okay. I I don't I don't really drink much anymore. I cut out drinking a while ago. Like I mean, I just don't drink that much. I, re I really don't. Um, yep. Okay. Uh, I've just found like over time, having mental clarity mm. is so critical, right? Because um, I, I have a very simple system. I call it the the M five system, right? M five system. Five system, and there's five things that um, I work to be in peak performance at at all times, right? Cool. What is you that? Know, one? Which, which is uh, my mind, right? So mentally, am I feeling on my A game, mm. right? And that's doing the things like some of the routine stuff, right? Feeding my brains, but also, like, hey, making sure like I don't really watch the news, right? Like it's just, it doesn't really help me, okay? Right? Like hanging out with people that can make me better, mm. right? Mm. You know, like doing things like if, if I get trolls online, which happens, like mm -hmm. now, yeah, happens, this, yeah. Block them, block and delete. Just, I, I don't want to do it anymore. Like I'm just like they're not, they're not bringing me down, right? Yeah. So mind, uh, muscle, and I'm not talking about just like being a physically strong. Like, do you just physically feel healthy? Mm. So mind, muscle, muscle, just being physically healthy, just being healthy. And I'm not saying everyone's gonna be super cut, but just 
being healthy, feeling good about yourself, right? Like it's, it's hard to, uh, you know, to be great if you feel terrible, right? Mm. So really important, just be physically, you feel healthy, right? So, and that's everyone's different. So, so mind, muscle, um, matter, your matter, your purpose. Okay. Are you on your purpose? Really important. Mm. Are you doing things towards your purpose or matter, right? Mm. Uh, money. Are you financially in a good spot? Like, are you making smart financial decisions, right? Like, some people love the, the, the instant gratitude for sure. Like, you know, I, I see it where like all of a sudden, while leading team, a rep have a great month and they go and buy a brand new, like you know, nice like Breitling or Rolex watch, right? Yep. You know, because maybe they they saw some of my collection, and I'm like, "What you what you don't know, kid, is uh, I have earned it. Yeah, and I can afford to buy these things cash multiple times over mm. because I built up to that point. I don't wait for one check to buy it, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, yeah. Know, I think it was Grant Cardone said, like, um, you know, if you can't buy cash, then you probably shouldn't buy it, right? Something, something like that, right? So, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's always the philosophy I've had. So, um, so the money piece is important, being financially set, so because. That's the number one stress for most people, right? Mm -hmm. And the last is a marriage, right? Like, and uh, your spouse is definitely one big piece. Who you marry is massively important. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> What's also really important are if you treat the people around you that you spend the most time with like it's a marriage, do they make you better? Mm -hmm. So, That's and interesting. it, it yeah. shifts your thinking a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. You might be like, you know what? Actually, I don't want to hang out with Tony because Tony is not making me better. I wouldn't marry Tony if I was a case. Like, yeah. he's just a drinking buddy. So, um, those five things, right? The M5, by being focused on that, this gives me massive clarity on what I need to do, mm. which means eat healthy, do these certain things, work out, be good with finances, <clears throat> spend time with the right people, right? And ultimately, M5 will, has led to some pretty cool results in my personal life and professional mm. life. And it helps me in my business in so many different ways too. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Um, so you've been doing that for quite some time, right? A few years, uh, M5 or something that Probably you've created? Like, oh, 14, 15 years. 14 years. Nice. Incredible. It's, okay. up, it's, built, it's built over time though. So it's not, yeah. it wasn't overnight. It started small. It's kind of like my morning routine. It started yeah. like small. And then as you start learning about other things, you get more awareness. You know what? A mm. lot of people follow the code they follow. Well, what's mine? Mm, it's important mm. to me mm. like and by having that clarity it allows you and over time at one point it's probably like an m2 system right yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> right you know and then eventually i'm like okay you know what like what's something i can really think about what else is really important to me, right what else would i need yeah right? yeah so, awesome how, how old are you by the way if you mind me asking yeah totally cool uh, i'm 30 35 35 okay yeah so yeah in personal development for quite some time as well been doing it yeah. for over 10 years and stuff yeah reading all oh, the yeah. books there yeah i can tell that you've, you've been working a lot on yourself on your mind your body and everything so it's really good awesome I appreciate that. Yeah. yeah cool cool okay so um um you've also founded um also sales ninja and bent Venti consulting as well so yeah. would you ex uh like explain a bit about that as well sales ninja starting yeah 100 percent. so um so Sales Ninja School is actually the, 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 um, the digital program I built, right? The digital course, right? The mm -hmm. comprehensive A to Z sales training. So I first built that, um, and that was under the, the premise of Sales Ninja School, right? Because um, mm. I've always thought about, um, you know, when I think about like, you know, like a ninja, right? And obviously, of Asian gold culture and descent, like I've always like, <clears throat> I love the concept of a ninja, someone who um, is a master of their craft, right? Obviously, a ninja in martial arts, but in sales, I'm like, some of the master of the craft. And I, and I found just like any sport, discipline as well. Yeah. Mm. A lot of discipline. Mm. Um, there's a lot of mental, a lot of mental stuff that's built in mm. um, a lot of skill, a lot of will. So it's not just like, okay, you're just high skill. There's a lot of will. It's a lot of work to get to that point. Right. Yeah. Um, and also it's a system, right? Like you don't just turn into a ninja. There's a system you follow to, mm. to become a ninja. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so I've always loved that like concept. So when I built my program, the title is so fitting, right? So I call it Sales Ninja School, and that's that's where I first built um, that, that digital program. And then mm. uh, from there, that's when my blog came and all the other other content too. Um, when when I when I was going to branch off, one thing I also want to build too was I want an over an overarching name for the company, mm. right? Because um, because that was really really for the, the digital training. 
But I knew what would happen would be just by, because of the business nature, I would be doing consulting and coaching work too. Mm. And I wanted something that would be the, the, over, the overlap. It. So this would be one program within the, the, the umbrella. Mm. So working with my wife, we looked at a lot of different words and we, got, we were trying to get all creative, right? And we kind of go through the, the path where we looked at all these common words. Like, like what's, what words are the best? Like, yeah. Peak apex you know like yeah. like okay <clears throat> they're all overdone they're all overdone yeah yeah we're like what can we um let's create a word a two syllable word um so working the, uh, she's very creative so she helped me with this um and uh so we came up with venly and then is a latin basis to sell mm. so this is everybody's like, okay. uh, everybody like a venmo for like your mm. phone to like send someone money venmo mm. right so same concept you know, with the word ven you know, like what's what's something else we can add on the end to create our own word? So we want something that's simple, two syllable, because um, typically the two syllable flows better, right? So mm. Benly, so people can really flow with that. So we're Benly Consulting. Um, so we built it as an overarching umbrella, and then um, you know the way it's set up now. So there's like the digital program that's one pillar, right? Mm-hmm. And really, that that's a big focus of what I focus on, right? Because that's something that's very scalable. It's allowed me to, to be, it's a lot of work right now, but it allows me to build a lifestyle business, mm, right? Mm. Where um, people get to go through the program and they come out awesome, right? And we're mm. having crazy results. I mean, yesterday I, I got a call with somebody and uh, he, 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 he messaged me. He's been in the program for uh, five weeks now. Yep. And um, he's like, hey, I, I, need, I need to talk to you about something about your program and I really need your help. I'm like, okay, I'll just, out of curse, let's, let's just talk. We got a call. And since he's been in the program, um, he's gone. Um, he's now number six in this company, one of the mm-hmm. best reps in the company. Um, he is pacing to uh, to double his income. Okay, double his income. Um, his boss, his sales manager, his director, and the VP got on a call with him because they can't figure out what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. And, and what's crazy about this is he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm getting to the point where I'm so busy because I'm selling so many deals. There's so much customer success work after yeah. that. He's like, people are calling me nonstop for my help, and he's like. It's crazy. Like, I feel like a jerk that I want to tell him no. And he's like, it's kind of start. I'm, I'm actually turning into kind of a jerk. I'm like, yeah. okay, number one, that's not how we do things. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, you can't, you gotta, you gotta be like, humble about it. Right. So mm. that was a pretty interesting uh, thing that, 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 was, that, was, that was gonna happen. But, anyways, um, I have my digital program. Mm-hmm. I do consulting work with some businesses. Right. And then I also have coaching and some of the coaching, even with, with businesses like maybe a sales director, or VP of sales directly. Mm-hmm. Them, right so that's all underneath the venly umbrella mm-hmm. so a lot of times if people are like you know look me up you know they want to see what company i work for it's venly now but then mm-hmm. i'm still into school as a program underneath it as my digital program mm-hmm. okay a whole lot of content there does that make sense mm-hmm. so so you've got the um the umbrella which is venly and then yep. you've got your your sales ninja and and the other courses and and, and coaching underneath it as well so you got awesome it. cool so, cool Awesome. Okay. Um, all right, then uh, one final question is um, let's say that you were to one day step into a time machine, you know, press yeah. a button and you go back maybe 10 years, um, maybe 15 years if you want. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What would you say to your younger self? Yeah, I would say um, uh, only take advice from people that achieved what you want to achieve. Right. I want to take advice from people that you achieve what you want to achieve. Mm. You know, I found um, a lot of people love to give advice. You know, they love to give advice. And, and sometimes it's, it's it, and it can be good. Right. Mm. Um, but is it the right advice? Yeah. You know? And mm. I found the best advice always comes from people who have achieved what I want to achieve. Right. So for example, I see at the gym sometimes too, right. Where the personal trainer is not in very good shape. Yeah. I wouldn't time. want to take advice from them, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. I want someone that um, not just knows the theory, but actually has li- that actually lives what they're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. And to me, it's really vitally important, right? And I see it whether you're in sales, like on LinkedIn, I see a lot of people, a lot of sales gurus, if you will. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, but you never like, we're good. Like, mm-hmm. you are spouting some things that are theory for sure, but you can tell you are you're a bit of a BS artist, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so, and, and you see it really often for in, the, in the influencer world mm-hmm. or maybe like one person had a month where they made $50,000 in e-commerce, right? Mm-hmm. And now 
They want to build a digital course. <laughs> you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah. Now they want to be a consultant. I'm like, but you had one month. Anyone can do something once. Mm. But those who are most consistent are the ones that I look up to, right? Mm. So, for example, like, and, and there's some people like, um, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know if you know Ryan Stuman, hardcore yeah, closer. Yeah, hardcore closer, yeah. Yeah, like, I mean, like, he, you know, he's, he's raw, he's out there, right? Mm. But the, the dude shows up every single day. Mm. He's putting mm. the work in, you see it. Like, I mean, you see it in his stories, you see it in his posts. He's always, he's putting the work in, mm. right? Mm. And even if you don't like him, that's respect, right? You don't have to agree mm. with the guy, but I'm like, you know what? I would buy his stuff because I simply respect the guy. Yeah, he's yeah. showing, he's consistent, and he, and he lives what he's saying. And that's mm. huge because mm. that's like a competitive advantage, right? So only take advice from people that have actually achieved what you want to achieve, right? Um, and it's kind of like, I'll give you a good, good example, right? So I have his friend, and it's nothing against, I'm not saying like, it's, it's you know, like nothing wrong, nothing wrong with the divorce, but yep. they've been divorced three times. Mm. And they want to, if they want to, and they love to give marriage advice. Yeah. I'm like, I want marriage advice from the couple who's been together for 50 years. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, true. Like, like, I know your mistakes, but like, they, they weathered the mistakes. Mm. <laughs> Those are who I want to listen to, right? Yeah. Those who have shown they can have long term success. Those are the best people to listen to. That's the advice I'll give my younger self because um, early on, I definitely took advice from people that was like, okay, I should do this, I should do that. You know, and you have to learn that there's just a lot of noise, especially with social media. Yeah. So you, you see, you see a lot of people now. They post these, um, you know, these infographics. Yeah. Right? It's like and it's full of advice, and some people are gonna fall for it, right? You know, mm-hmm. like, and I, 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 I'm like, oh. it makes me think, like, should I do that? That's a nice looking image. Should, yeah. Oh no, I shouldn't do that. But it, 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 it can trick you mm. because those people don't truly have success. They portray that they have success. Mm. So who's really, who's really going after it? Follow those people. Those are the ones mm. that are actually going to change your life. Yeah, that that like yeah, your, your piece of advice is so re- relevant these days because yeah, you know, Instagram. When you go on Instagram, you see all the all those quotes and everything, and you see the um people you know pitching these different systems on Amazon, all these different things. It looks so you know so tempting and everything, but you don't really know whether they've done it or not. It's just you know just information to go into their funnel, whatever it is. So right. yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, cool. All right then. So um, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah, awesome. So um, you can find me on um, if it's on LinkedIn, it's uh, mm-hmm. Marcus Chan MBA. Right on LinkedIn, it's very easy. On Instagram, it's the real Marcus Chan. Um, you can also go to, to my uh, go to salesninjaschool.com. Mm-hmm. Go there. There's a ton of free resources in there. It's on my free video trainings. I have, we can reach out to me directly in there as well. So I got it's it's basically like my link tree. It's all mm-hmm. right there. So nice. you can go right there. Everything's there. It's very easy to get to. Beautiful. Awesome. Well, Marcus, I really appreciate your time today. Um, had a you know, really great conversation with you today. Learned a lot about you in sales, um, your bit of background as well. And um, yeah, thanks for sharing your, your words of wisdom today. I wish you all the best for future endeavors. And um, yeah, like, you know, keep doing what you're doing and I uh, wish you all the best for, for future endeavors. Thank you. Awesome, my man. Thank you so much for having me on. Appreciate it. No worries, man. All right. Thanks a lot.